Hey everybody, Scott Detweiler here. So Stability has just released our SDXL Turbo model. So this is a distilled version of the SDXL full model. Uh, and it's going to have some restrictions, but it can do images in nearly real time with only one step. Now it's going to be limited. Of course, that's really great goal. And again, this is a research release. So these are things that we're developing as we're going. And this is a chance to kind of play with that and kind of see what we can, what we can do with it. So it does some restrictions. Uh, it's only a 512 by 512 square model. So realize that. Um, it's not going to do text very well. It's probably not going to be very photorealistic, and it's probably not going to do faces extremely well. But it is, again, a research release or a stepping off point to show how we can speed up this process in the future. So kind of keep an open mind to that. Now, I'm going to show you in Comfy how to use this. It's very simple, but we're going to take the case sampler and I'm going to rip it apart into some of the subsections or other things that drive the case sampler. Uh, so this has been available in Comfy for a while now, uh, but I guess a lot of people really haven't gotten into it very much. But this is an opportunity where we really have to rip into it. Now, a couple of things to be aware of. Your CFG is going to have to be a one and you're going to need one or maybe two steps at the most. Anything else in your images are going to look pretty trash. So if you're wondering why, that'd be the reason. Also, make sure your Comfy is up to date because this just came out yesterday. Uh, so if you're wondering why you don't see it, that'd be the reason. Always make sure your Comfy as well as all the custom nodes are up to date. That will eliminate 90% of the problems everyone seems to have when they put in the comments after these videos and saying, it doesn't appear in my image. That'd be the reason why. <laughs> so anyway, let's take a look at it. Okay, now to get started with this, we're going to go ahead and load in the SDXL Turbo model, just like you would into a regular checkpoint. I'm going to do this very quickly. We're going to create two text encoders. Now, remember that the SDXL Turbo model does not use the negative prompt. So we're still need it, uh, but we're not going to be using it for anything else. Uh, now, here's where it gets really interesting. Normally, we'd load a case sampler in here, but you can also load in a custom scheduler, uh, a custom sampler, I should say, so that we can kind of break it down into the individual components that make up the case sampler. And this is kind of a, opening the door to uh, other goofing around as well, instead of just you know using this model, but using this method with other models as well. So if we pull this out, uh, we can see we have our typical case sampler here, and I may have other options that you do not have, uh, but don't worry about that. But if we type in, if we double click and type in the word custom, we can see sampler custom comes up, right? And this is pretty obvious from at least a couple of these. So we'll have the positive, our negative, and so on. Again, we won't be using the negative, so we'll just kind of collapse that. Now, the other ones here that are interesting are sampler and sigmas. So if we pull sampler out, you can see we can load in case sampler select. This allows us to pick which sampler we're going to be using. I'm going to go ahead and pick the DPM++ 2M. This is the one that I'm preferring right now. So for the latent image, we're going to be using a 512 by 512 empty latent. This is ideal for this model. Uh, so go ahead and stick with this for now. And then for the sigmas, this is where it's really interesting. There are a lot of different sigmas that you can use. Now, if you pull this out and look at it, you're going to see there's a basic scheduler, a keras scheduler, an exponential scheduler, a poly exponential scheduler, and so on. But you'll see this new one is the SD turbo scheduler. If you do not see this, then you need to stop and update your comfy uh, because it is brand new. And if you're using one that is even a day old, uh, you're now behind the times. And this is the number of steps it's going to allow. Now, in this case, two is probably the maximum. One is ideal. Uh, two might be allowed, uh, but uh, anything more than that, you're going to see the image is going to break down into something silly. So this is basically it. So from here, we can use a VE decode, just like we would normally, and borrow our VAE. And then I'm going to highly suggest you use a preview image here and not a save image, because you're going to see it gets insane pretty quickly. Uh, so if we go ahead and put in a prompt of anything... Okay, now if we hit Q prompt on this, you're going to see it's very burned out, and that's because the CFG is set to 8. You're going to want to set this down to 1. Try it again. And there you go. And you see how fast that is. This is insane. There's actually something pretty funny you can do here. So <laughs> this, is, this is a little, uh, little fun, uh, but this is really where I think this is going to shine. I'm just going to copy and duplicate this whole thing by holding down my shift key, and I'm going to take and just let these uh, be whatever they're going to be as far as the seed goes. What I'm going to do is I'm going to have four different ones. And you're going to see here what I'm going to do is uh, pretty wacky. So I'm going to take these four here and I'm going to create kind of a, a GUI for myself, a, a graphical user interface. So here's my prompt, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my prompt and I'm going to drag this over here. I know this is going to be messy. Uh, just don't worry about it right now. This is going to be pretty fun. And this is where I think this model is really, really interesting. Again, this is a research model. Uh, so it's more for a goofing around and not so much for serious work. Uh, but again, this is pretty fun. All right, so once you get these all in place and a little OCD there, once we have this kind of arranged, what I'm going to do now is go up and set these all to fixed. 
We're going to make sure they're different seeds, but we want them all to be fixed. And the reason is, if we don't do this, it's going to be spraying images at us too quickly. So we get something like this. One other thing you want to do is go up and hit Auto Q here, and then click Q Prompt. And it's going to go ahead and start the process. And as we type, it's going to update all four of these in real time. So as you work your prompt, you can kind of see how it's affecting things. Again, the seeds, we're only looking at four seeds here. Uh, so if you want more, obviously, you can go ahead and expand this. But this gives you a little bit of an idea of how the engine is interpreting your prompts, which I think is the thing to really walk away with here is learning how the engine is looking at your prompts. Because as you change the prompt, you'll see that reflected immediately. So it's a much more interactive process. So I hope you found that helpful. Again, this is a research release. So let me know in the comments what you think of this and how you're gonna find it useful. Again, there's lots of great things we can do as points of departure for this model. And I'm really excited to try it out. Everybody take care, stay safe, and I'll catch you all next time.